guys what is interstellar object three i was doing today it is doing something the tail has wobbled before perihelion guys and it's crazy so early in its journey through the solar system before it passed closest to the sun someone noticed a strange behavior already in 3i atlas's anti-tail right the anti-tail is part of the dust cloud that looks like it's pointing towards the sun and it is pointing towards the sun in the case of 3i atlas and it's not away from the sun like normal comets would do this so what i want to tell you today is how that anti-tail wasn't fixed, it wobbled over time, and this tells us something important. But first, I want you to look at this graphic because this is crucial. So this graph is actually not about brightness, it's about direction. Specifically, it tracks the direction of the anti-tail of 3i Atlas, that is so important. So what's being measured? Look at the graphic and I'll tell you. Um, Astronomers measured the position angle, the position angle of that anti-tail. Position angle just means which direction the anti-tail is pointing on the sky. And it is measured in degrees, it's like a compass. So zero degrees is one direction, 90 degrees is another, 180 degrees is another, 360 degrees brings you back around. So here the values are around 275 to 290 degrees. Where is this measurement taken? Because this is important guys, they did not measure right at the nucleus of 3i Atlas. They measured the anti-tail at a distance of 6,000 kilometers from the brightness peak. That's what you see here in this image. That's roughly 3,700 miles from the brightness peak. So this avoids noise close to the core and it looks at the real structure of the tail. So what does the x-axis mean? Face. So look at the bottom axis, right? It says face. Face means where, where we are in one full rotation cycle. Phase zero, start of the rotation. Phase one, one full rotation later and everything between zero and one is just different moments during one spin so the rotation period we also see this here on this graphics all these measurements are folded into a rotation period of 7.74 hours plus minus zero zero three five hours that means 3i Atlas appears to rotate roughly once every seven to eight hours. We thought before that it's 16 hours, so obviously that has reduced. That is relatively fast, guys, for such an object. That's why the earlier estimate was 16 hours. Seven to eight hours to rotate. 3i Atlas is huge. What do the colored dots mean? Each Colored dot is a real observation. Each color is a different observing cycle taking on different days. So that's what we're seeing here. The dates are just listed in the legend on the left of this image. So this is real data, guys. This is not a simulation. The vertical bars on the dots are error bars. They show uncertainty in the measurement. And what does now this curved line means? The smooth wavy line is a Fourier fit. That's just a mathematical way to say what smooth curve best fits these points. Find the curve. It shows that the anti-tail direction changes in a repeating periodic way. Wow. That is a big deal. That's why I repeat it, guys. The anti-tail changes direction in a repeating periodic way. Let's have a quick look at the red horizontal line. The red line is the average position angle. This represents the projected direction of the rotation axis of 3i Atlas on the sky. Um, in other words, this is the average spin direction around which everything is wobbling. And now 
as a as a whole what is this image really showing this plot shows that the anti tail does not point in a fixed direction it slowly swings back and forth and it does so in a regular pattern the pattern matches a 7.7 .7 hour rotation this means guys the anti tail is being controlled by the rotation of the object itself not just random gas bursts not noise not camera effects this is huge this is really huge this matters so much guys because this tells us something critical 3i atlas has a stable rotation axis a repeating rotational period and a structured persistent anti tail so that means the object is physically coherent and rotationally organized this is not chaotic debris that's flying around there guys and another very important point some people claim the tail disappeared this image proves that this is extremely false you cannot measure a rotating anti-tail if the anti-tail is gone anti-tail is real it's still here it rotates with the object, its direction changes smoothly, object spins every 7.7 .7 hours, spin axis is stable, strong evidence altogether that the anti-tail is persistent and structured. Let's get back to the wobbling. So what does this wobble look like, the wobble? Well, what the graph is showing us it's not a straight flat line it is a wave and that means that as the object spins the anti-tail direction slowly shifts back and forth it's not random it's not jacked it's ry rhythmic like a smooth wobble and since this was seen in data from multiple nights all collapsed into one repeating cycle that's the evidence so this wobble was real so here comes the point. If 3i Atlas were just a simple comet, let's say, like a typical comet chunk of ice, you might expect that its jets would come from some random patch of ice that is somewhere on the object, right? That, would, that patch then would point away from the sun when heated and you'd just see dust and gas flow. This is the tail that we see from normal comets. But here's something specific. The data that we have here suggests the jet of 3i Atlas that creates the anti-tail is coming from very close to the rotation axis. So not just some random area where there's a lot of ice on the comet. How can that be? The rotation axis of 3i Atlas is like the north-south line of a spinning top. So if a jet comes near the axis, it tends to stay more aligned with the spin. The fit to the data suggests the jet base is within 8 degrees of that spin axis. That means the spin axis and the jet are very closely aligned. And that is odd. This is really odd, guys. For a normal comet, the direction of jets usually comes and goes as different ice patches rotate in and out of sunlight. But if the jets get close to the, the, the spin pole, like the very top, it stays in sunlight longer and it behaves consistently. That, that seems to be what the data is showing, right? Of course we can say, does this point in the direction that this might be an artificial jet? The alignment is surprising. There is no way to sugarcoat this. Scientists call this an anomaly. And why? Because if the jet were just caused by random icy spots on a rubble pile, the alignment to the sun direction as seen over time should not be so close. Random spots give wider swings. But here the swing remains with a very narrow range, guys. Whoa, what is going on? Definitely know it suggests stability. Stability, right? In a natural comate? That's, that's, I don't know. So 
Harvard professor Avi Loeb says that at large distances, even before the object got close to the sun, this alignment was already present, guys. And that is surprising. You wouldn't expect such a stable alignment configuration from a normal randomly shaped object that is made out of ice and rock. And since the object spins, what happens over time? That's the question. When an object spins, different parts get sunlight at different times, right? If it's turning around, you only have certain parts of it exposed to the sun. So if the jet's source region is far from the spin pole, it would heat up at, at some phases of rotation and then cool down at other phases of rotation. That would show up in the direction measurements. But the wobble that we see here is gentle and persistent. That means, this is crucial now. Listen to me, guys. Listen, students. This is crazy. The jet source is consistently illuminated. Consistently. Does that sound like a spacecraft jet? Guys, no, really, the assumption is still this is natural, right? We have so many anomalies, but we haven't proven anything yet. So, of course, if the jet source is consistently illuminated, that's what you would expect if the source is near the spin axis. But we already said that's odd. So what happened then? as 3 Atlas was approaching the sun, perihelion, closest point to the sun, when it was actually hidden from our sight. Well, we can only judge by how it was or what state it was in when it came out of perihelion, because then we were able to see it again. After perihelion, the images still show a strong anti-tail pointing towards the sun. But now the geometry has changed because the object's spin orientations remains the same, while the sun's direction changes as the object moves away. Avi Loeb suggests that if the anti-tail always points towards the sun, then both before and after perihelion, the jet source must be arranged in a very specific way. If this were a typical comet with random icy patches, the anti-tail before perihelion and after perihelion would likely require different patches to be exposed and activated. So that again suggests something unusual about the placement of the jet sources relative to the spin axis. Interestingly enough, Avi Loeb gives it give this gives this specific alignment a statistical weight, and I love these calculations. So he estimates that the chance of this alignment happening randomly with jets from random surface patches is very low. He gives it a number, about 0 0.005, that is 0.5%, half a percent, or 1 in 200. But then, and that's interesting, then he reasons that if you need this favorable condition in both cases, before and after perihelion, the combined probability that it happens both times is even smaller. It's roughly 1 in 40 thousands. He calls this a separate anomaly. So this would be from what we have. We have a few more than Avi Loeb. We have the scientists that said this could be erupting ice volcanoes. So for us, this is roughly anomaly number 16. For Avi Loeb, it's number 14. And he says this is a notable anomaly. If we want to speculate what this anomaly can be used for, so if this object were artificial, like a spacecraft, you might actually naturally expect that the jets would be aligned with the spin axis. And that's because spacecraft often have main thrusters aligned with their rotation axis, right? But we do not have, and that's what he makes clear, a direct image that is showing the jet base or the jet direction very close to the nucleus near perihelion. So it's not a claim that this is artificial. It's a logical possibility that fits the geometry. So it is interesting. 
anti-tail of three eye atlas does not point in a fixed direction before perihelion it wobbled in a rhythmic way as the object rotated and because of that we can locate the location of that anti-tail that is very unusual for a natural comet with random icy patches so i will keep you updated after this video there's going to be something else so i hope you liked it like and hype it subscribe guys and if you want to support me with coffee and now i spilled it this is great i didn't spill it on my laptop link is in the description thank you so much guys if we don't see each other before christmas merry christmas